Have you ever wondered why some people bounce back from stress more easily, while others seem to be more sensitive to the same experience? Well, what if I told you that there's a single gene that can influence how resilient your brain is to stress, how well you recover from trauma, and even how effective your antidepressants might be? Well, in today's video, we're diving into the fascinating world of the BDNF gene and its powerful impact on mental health and what you can do to support it naturally. So stay tuned. Hi, my name is Giselle Rosa and I'm a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner and mental health coach. On this channel, we take a holistic look at mental health, combining it with science, self-awareness and lifestyle strategies that actually move the needle. So if you're about skills before pills, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So let's get into the BDNF gene. So what does BDNF stand for? Well, BDNF is brain derived neurotropic factor, and it's like miracle grow for your brain. It helps neurons grow, connect and repair. And it also plays a major role in neuroplasticity, your brain's ability to adapt to new experiences, learn new skills, and recover from stress and trauma. So think of BDNF as the foundation of a flexible and resilient mind. Now I made a video on neuroplasticity. If you missed that, check it out, but it goes into ways on how you can increase and improve your neuroplasticity by improving BDNF. So now let's talk about the BDNF gene and the VAL 66 met variant. Now here's where it gets personal. You see the BDNF gene has a well-known variant called the VAL66 met and about 20 to 30% of people carry at least one copy of the met allele. So if you're a met carrier, your brain may not release BDNF as effectively in response to stress or activity. And research actually shows that this can lead to reduced stress resilience, heightened fear responses, and increased risk of depression, PTSD, and substance use disorders. It also can lead to slower recovery after trauma. And in fact, individuals with the met allele showed an impaired fear extinction, which is critical for overcoming these anxiety related conditions like phobias and even PTSD. So now let's talk about BDNF and psychiatric disorders. You see, low BDNF has actually been implicated in many mental health disorders, such as depression, anxiety and phobic disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD, and post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, and even Alzheimer's and cognitive decline. It has also been seen to be a factor in substance dependence, including alcohol use disorders. And there have been animal models that have shown that BDNF actually causes disruption in specific brain regions like the hippocampus, the amygdala, and even the prefrontal cortex, which can mimic the emotional and behavioral patterns seen in these conditions. It's also important to note that those with the BDNF gene have to be careful with dieting. You see, in a 2011 study, those with the met allele of the BDNF gene found that severe food restriction or these like starvation diets, like skipping meals, can actually increase the risk of binge eating disorder in the BDNF met carriers. Why? Because BDNF actually helps to regulate appetite and emotional responses. So if BDNF is already low and you end up restricting your food too aggressively, the brain may actually rebound with intense cravings and dysregulated eating. So if you have the BDNF met allele and you're focused on your mental wellness or even healing your relationship with food, gentle nourishment, not restriction in diet is actually key. And now let's talk about how to support BDNF naturally. So regardless of your genetics, you can take steps to actually enhance your BDNF levels. Number one would be aerobic exercise. Movement is one of the most potent stimulators of BDNF. Just 20 to 30 minutes of walking, biking, hiking, even dancing can make a huge difference. 
And number two, sunlight and circadian rhythm. You see natural light, especially early in the morning, helps to regulate the biological clock or biological rhythms that influence your BDNF expression. Number three is nutritional support. So your omega-3 fatty acids, curcumin, which is found in turmeric, magnesium and zinc, even green tea components like EGCG can actually help to enhance BDNF. However, we have to make sure that you don't have other gene variants like COMT or MTHFR or other genes that could potentially affect the way that you can actually handle these different nutrients or these different types of supplements or even foods like caffeine and green tea because you could actually have adverse reactions. So that's why it's important and to not just focus on one singular gene, to look at many genes that work together and look at your symptoms along with your biology. The fourth thing we wanna look at when we're looking at BDNF is mindfulness and meditation. You see, several studies show that regular meditation actually increases BDNF levels and improves your emotional regulation and attention. And last but not least is number five, sleep. Sleep is crucial and not only sleep, but deep high quality sleep is essential for your brain to restore and regenerate BDNF. You see, while you're sleeping, your glymphatic system will actually help to clear out toxins and also help to improve your brain function for the next day. And so my final thoughts on BDNF and the BDNF gene is that it's just one component of your genetic makeup and one component of a factor that could potentially affect your mental health. But it's not the entire picture. And that's why it's important to look at BDNF along with other genes that can impact your mental health, along with the symptoms that you're expressing and your lab work. What does your blood work say? Are you having increased inflammation? Are you having issues with vitamin and nutrient absorption? Looking at all of this together can give us a clearer picture for an individualized treatment plan to support and optimize your nutrition for better brain health. And understanding and knowing your BDNF status is one big clue on how we can help support work with your brain and not against it. So if you're interested in optimizing your brain health, using your genetic blueprint and understanding your labs and your mental health symptoms, go ahead and check the links down in the description. As always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next video.